Hey guys, Rory is here. Welcome back to Dream Daddy, a dad dating simulator. <laughs> Today, I'm going to be dating, well, going on the first date with Damien. But first, we have a message from Craig. <laughs> Hello, Amanda's dad. It's me, your friend Craig, <laughs> who loves sports. I have nice and smart children who are good at computers. Ah, man, great to hear from you, buddy. <laughs> What's up? I'm still... I'm still strong. Strong. I am strong. <laughs> Don't I know it? Say, I've been reading up about they about whey they protein. <laughs> but whey protein. You use that at all? I figure it'd help me develop a bit more muscle. Yes, I know what that is. My children are having a tea party and they wanted to invite Amanda, but we can't find her on here. <laughs> You're also invited. Physical invitation to follow. Cool. I'd love to come. I'll let Amanda know. Thank you, Amanda's dad. <laughs> it didn't click in my head until right at the end there. <laughs> this is totally Hazel, isn't it? It's Hazel, the evil one. Was it? Was? Yeah, I feel like Hazel's the evil one, isn't she? This is totally Hazel or Briar or whatever messaging me through here to try and get to Amanda. But like, that's why it's like, <laughs> that's why firstly, misspelt strong. And uh, <laughs> it's, it's me, your friend Craig, who loves sports. I have nice and smart children. <laughs> Attend that party. I can't believe I didn't notice it until the end there. <laughs> if you don't have anything nice to say, don't say anything at all. I stand by that dad tip, number 76. It's a good, good thing to, to live by, a good, uh, Motto to live by. Too many people are too eager to give their negative opinions about things. Criticism is important. I'll just say that, but <laughs> sometimes people are intentionally harsh for no reason. Coffee time. You know dads love coffee. Gonna brew myself something black as midnight on a moonless night. I put a strangely poetic, poetic sentence. I put on a fresh pot and work on a few word jumbles while we wait for it to brew. Hey, this one spells sorrow. <laughs> Dad, ready for today? I'm ready for every day, sweetie. Gonna tackle it head on. Mm. No, are you ready for that thing we're gonna do today? The thing that you promised we you'd do? Honey, I already told you that I'm not gonna throw away my Tom Clancy novels. <laughs> Tom Clancy novels. They're just stacked in the living room. I keep bumping into them and knocking them over and you don't even read them. <laughs> Wait, no, that's not what I I'm here about. <laughs> it's like, sidetracked. The tea party, Dad. Nope, I don't remember that. Mm. Craig's kids, that hand-drawn invitation. <laughs> Amanda walks over to the refrigerator and comes back with a hand-drawn invitation on a sheet of computer paper. <laughs> Inviting Amanda and Amanda's dad to a tea party. They spelled cordi cordially wrong. <laughs> Just put on some going outside pants and let's get going. <laughs> I can go outside in sweatpants, nothing's stopping me. No, I'm, I'm all about the... I wear sweatpants when I'm at home. As soon as I step out that door, I have to be in proper clothing. <laughs> I refuse to be in sweatpants outside. Hmm. Dad, just... Ugh. I'll see you in a minute. Put on going outside pants. Fuck authority. Nah, put on, put hmm. on going outside pants. <laughs> Hello, thank you for coming for our tea party. I do my best to bow and present my daughter, who thanks them with a, cur with a curtsy. This way, please. Briar and Hazel leads us to a small table with tiny chairs. Some are occupied by stuffed animals, and Matt and his daughter, Carmen Sita, are here too. Matt raises a comically small plastic teacup for me. Hey, dude. How's the tea? Hey. The imaginary tea is absolutely wonderful. I taste a hint of lemongrass. <laughs> Hello, Carmen Sita. Hello, Mr. Amanda's dad. <laughs> they don't remember my name. <laughs> Please have a seat. I sit down between Amanda and Matt. Hmm. I don't think I'm going to be able to get out of this chair. <laughs> Hi everyone. Oh. I turn to Daisy and Brian. <laughs> I turn to see Daisy and Brian enter into the backyard and take a seat next to take a seat next to us. Oh, today's not a good day for my language, my English. Sorry we're late. Daisy made me put on my going outside pants. <laughs> Let it go. Let it go or see Amanda. 
Hmm. See, Amanda? <laughs> Amanda gives me a knowing look and I return an obliging wink. She rolls her eyes. Hmm. <laughs> Is that really something your daughter, daughter had to pressure you into, Brian? I give Amanda another, even more exaggerated wink. She rolls her eyes even harder. Thank you all for taking time out of your busy schedules for some high tea. Now if you put on your des designated tiaras. Ah. There are little tiaras sitting on everyone's plates. Well, except for Brian's. His is a softball helmet. <laughs> oh, uh, we ran out of tiaras. I don't think this is going to fit me, but I appreciate the thought. Dad, you're royalty. Please act like Whoa. it. <laughs> Brian tries to balance the ill-fitting softball helmet on top of his head, but it immediately tumbles off and on into the bushes. Hey. I'll get that later. Hey, everybody. Craig comes out with a teapot and a tray of sandwich cookies. Sandwich cookies? Like, as an ice cream sandwich cookie? Dad, is the tea ready? Mm. Uh, yeah. It's been, uh, steeping for a while now. Awesome. Mm -hmm. Would you girls like to serve our guests tea? No, thank you. We'd much appreciate our servant's help. <laughs> Craig leans over to me. Mm. That's me. <laughs> Craig places teacups in front of us all, and a single sandwich cookie onto each of our plates. He pours some tea into my cup. Hmm. Awfully fluorescent for tea. I clink my teacup with mats and take a sip. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> good lemonade. It's tea. Hey. Right, very good tea. <laughs> I lean over to Amanda, who's happily enjoying her tea. Tea. <laughs> so, what do we do at tea parties? Huh? We enjoy the splendors of upper class society, father. <laughs> she takes a dainty bite of her sandwich cookie. Ah. Marvelous. <laughs> so, the meeting of princesses has been called to order. Ah. Here, here. But I'm a warrior princess. I hunt stuff and I have, like, a really cool sword. We got this. Can I be a space princess? I'll allow it. And I'll be rock star princess. I'll be a rock star princess. I'm also a space princess. <laughs> Can there be more than one? Mm. I, I can't give each of these girls their own voice. I'm sorry. They're just gonna all blend together. Amanda has a unique voice, but everyone else <laughs> just gets the same voice. That may be Carmen Sita. I think she has a different voice as well. Space is pretty big, don't you think? I changed my mind. I want to be a space princess too. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Dad, what are, what are you? Do I get to be a princess? Duh. Well, I guess that makes me... History Channel princess? Hacker princess? Rude boy, princess. <laughs> uh, what's a rude boy? I don't- I honestly- <laughs> I honestly don't know what that means. What's a rude boy? Oh, it's a- it's totally a scar thing, isn't it? That's right, a rude boy is a scar thing. Oh, totally. Rude boy, princess. <laughs> if I drop my crown on the floor, I'll make sure to pick it up. Pick it up. Pick it up. <laughs> nice. <Hey. laughs> I'll think I'll be a landscaper and general contracting princess. <laughs> Barista princess reporting for duty. Dude. Hey, everybody, CrossFit princess here. <laughs> Not now, servant. Mm -hmm. If it weren't for the princess uprising, it would be you serving me. <laughs> we sip tea for a little longer, then the girls run off to fight dinosaurs as space rock star warrior princesses, I think. They grow up so fast. It was like yesterday that I was helping Amanda throw her own tea parties. Nice. Her own tea parties. Did she make you a servant too? You betcha. <laughs> Carmen Cita made me actually brew teas for hers. Pitfalls of owning a coffee shop. Oh. I keep... Matt's voice is one of those ones I change every time I do it. And I can never choose one that I actually, actually like. I don't want to give him just a cliche Southern American, African American voice. I'm trying to give him- I'm trying to match the voice I can hear, but I'm not good at voices. <laughs> Pitfall? Your custom blends are amazing. That hibiscus one you gave me a while back was ch was choice. Hey. Aw, oh, thanks. <laughs> it's really nice the girls are getting along. Yeah, I'm really glad that we moved to the, into this community. Hey. We are too. Amanda's been kind of a role model to them, you know? I hadn't even realized, and I don't even know if Amanda does either. But I guess they're right. All of the girls in the neighborhood look up to her. She seems to go out of her way to play with them. Right, right. I'm so proud of her. You've been not proud dad cry at this tea party, Rorius. I brought extra word jumbles if anyone wants to kill some time while the girls play. 
The day rolls on and the girls get all tuckered out. Amanda spends the whole day playing with them and taking their pictures, promising that she'll send them the best ones later. We all clean up and help put away the tea sets and tables, then head out as Daisy and come and see to fall asleep on their dad's shoulders. Aww. Oh. Take care, guys. Thanks for coming. Bye, rude boy princess. <laughs> I'm just gonna, I'm gonna check. I'm gonna fucking check. That is what that is, isn't it? You want dinner? Nah, I filled up on cookies. Me too. I'm tired. Mm. Dude, same. Playing with a bunch of little kids who all simultaneously want your attention and approval is surprisingly exhausting. Mm. But in a good way? But also in kind of a scary way. How so? I feel like I gotta be on my best behavior for them. I don't want to let them down. Is this because you still feel bad about dropping the F-bomb in front of your cousin that one time? I corrupted her, Dad! She's secondhand smokes now! Secondhand smokes? <laughs> well, those kids really look up to you. I'm glad they have you as a role model. Mm. Shucks, Pops. I ruffle Amanda's hair. Ah, oh, that was a sweet short one. Alrighty, so, we're gonna go on the first date with Damien today. Dad tip 56. D uh, go ask your mother. <laughs> Damien seemed really interesting. A little odd, but interesting. I think I should hang out with him to get to know him a little better. I never get to Damien's dad book page and type out a message. Hey dude, you seem cool. We should hang out sometime. I sit there for a minute before I see that Damien's typing. But then he keeps typing. And typing. Man, is this guy writing a novel? I leave the computer to make some coffee. And he's still typing. I sip my coffee and computer, f and the computer finally dings. Oh god. Uh. Okay. Let me read this first. Rorius, I must confess my excitement to be receiving your kind letter. For, as you see, I do find myself available to enjoy your company. I must ask for your forgiveness, however, as I believe our first meeting did not paint me as in as gentlemanly manner as I would have liked. <laughs> oh whoa, there's more. <laughs> I would be highly flattered to enjoy your companionship at my residence for an afternoon tea and a stroll around my garden. Should it please you. Till then, adieu. Yours humbled, D. Bloodmarch. I stare at the screen and reread the letter several more times. <laughs> hey Amanda, can you help me with something? Ugh. Dad, for the last time I'm not popping your back pimples. <laughs> I do, I do sometimes get back pimples. <laughs> no, no. Can you interpret this for me? I turn the computer to Amanda and she squints at Damien's message. I just don't understand NetSpeak. Like, is this how you kids communicate with each other now? I get it. I'm more highbrow than the game makes out. Oh, totally. This is the hot new thing. See, Dad, kids got over saying lol and lamau or whatever, and decided that what they needed to do is bring it back to the 1800s. So what do I do? Hmm. Where's your pen and quill? What? <laughs> Did you forget to unpack your pen and quill? Dad, how will we address the nobleman in regards with your upcoming debutante ball? <laughs> okay, now I know you're messing with me. Father, without a proper chaperone, you'll never end up with a suitor worthy of, your, of our land. Yeah. Or our dowry. Or... So you read Pride and Prejudice for school one time and now you're reciting things you know about it back to me, aren't you? Like, the first five pages and then I read a review of the movie. <laughs> Still gotta be, though. Great, so what do I say to Damien? I got this. Amanda reaches over me and types on the keyboard. <laughs> oh my god. Amanda hits send and smiles at me. Sure thing, dude. Regards, Rose. Oh my god. Well, I suppose that's that. I make the short walk over to Damien's house. Well, I guess you can't really call it a house. It's more of a manor. Estate? The gothic architecture looms above the other homes in the cul-de-sac. <laughs> I walk past a couple of gargoyles guarding the front door and look around for a doorbell. There doesn't seem to be one. I pull the large, ornately carved bat's head door knocker back and hollow sound echoes throughout the house as I strike it against the door. I wait several moments before the door slowly creaks open. 
It's a little creepy, but I enter the home and take a few steps into the foyer, noticing the oil portraits of who I assume are dead relatives hanging on the wall. <laughs> As I'm admiring them, the front door slams shut behind me. Hello? Silence. An oil lamp in the corner flickers dimly, casting ominous shadows against the wall. Why do I feel like... <gasps> the music. Why do I feel like all the people in the paintings are staring straight at me? Why is it so cold in here? Where's Damien? Rorius, pleasure to have you in my home. I look up and see Damien standing at the top of the majestic staircase with a walking candle holder? <laughs> it's okay. What's, uh, what's with the door slamming shut? Ah. Oh. oh, sorry. There was a draft. And the door creaking open when I knocked? Oh. I accidentally left the door unlocked. And the creepy oil paintings? <laughs> I like oil paintings. <laughs> right. Hmm. Right. Hmm. Pleasure. Let me show you around. Okay. <laughs> Damien leads me around his house, showcasing his parlor, sitting room, auxiliary sitting room, and the parlor again for some reason. <laughs> How delightful. <laughs> That's not the voice. I first saw Damien's dates when Markiplier played this way back in the day. I say way back in the day, it was last year. He did a very, very regal voice for Damien. And so I'm kind of going for something similar, not quite the same, I'm doing my own thing of it, but um, I'm going for a very sort of regal voice. Does not match the voice I just heard <laughs> at all. This is one of the older homes on the block, yes, but nowhere near as old as the architecture might suggest. Oh. Through extensive renovations, I have been able to craft a residence that is both historically accurate to the Victorian period and equipped with the amenities of any modern dwelling. We walk past a door covered in bumper stickers, caution tape, and a black parade poster. His, his son. <laughs> Did they listen to My Chemical Romance in the Victorian era? That's my son's room. You know how the rebellious teenage years are. Onward, onward, there's more to see. We've reached a door at the end of the hall that Damien opens with a flourish. And this is the library. <laughs> I like how the music jumps back to the, just the like super fun, fun loving music. Sunlight streams in from floor to ceiling arched windows. The walls are lined with packed bookshelves and even more books are scattered over the period appropriate furniture. <laughs> Damien is clearly really proud of this room. Look out the window, look- okay, wait, wait, wait. Save. There is a that's enough. I'm gonna assume that I can look at all of these. Look out the window. There we go. I walk to the window and I'm greeted by a beautiful view of Damien's backyard. It showcases a beautiful view of the rest of the cul-de-sac. Hey, I can see Craig on his lawn. He's doing push-ups with his daughters and on his back. Damn. He sees me and waves happily, doing push-ups with one hand now. <laughs> Damn! Oh. <laughs> Did you know that Victorians spent at least 20 hours a week gazing longingly out of full-length windows? Wait, really? Mm. No, but Victorians did appreciate telling a good joke. <laughs> one second, I'm gonna get my... I have a list. I will admit, the list that I made is self-made. <laughs> a list of all of the, like, best outcomes for every scenario. I'm gonna pull it up. Okay, look at the butterflies. You walk up to the glass display of pinned bugs on the wall. It's pretty impressive. Nice bugs. <laughs> I pinned the ball myself. Maybe I could show you how sometime. I'm concerned I would stick the pin right through my finger. Oh. Ah, the pinner's gambit. Is that a thing? No. <laughs> Pick up a book. <laughs> yeah, whenever it's like a multi-choice thing, uh, if it's like, if there's three choices and then there's one that's like, that's enough, just do all of them. Most of the time doing all of them is the best outcome. I think there might be some cases where it's not, but for, for, the, most, uh, for the most part, uh, all of them are the best. You know, Rorius, in the Victorian era there was some controversy surrounding reading. Many people thought the more tawdy novels would encourage youths into a life of crime and would cause too much of a distraction from work and school. I pull out a book at random and examine the worn cover. Opening it, I turn to a random page and I read aloud. <laughs> I remember this. Naruto struggled against the chains that Sasuke had bound him with. Shirtless and out of breath, he looked up at Sasuke. Sasuke sm smirked, unbuttoning his ninja pants. Ha! Ah! Ah! <laughs> okay, I think that's enough. <laughs> okay, I think that's enough. Damien snaps the book shut and puts it back into the shelf. That's a rare book from my private collection. <laughs> Just happens to be the book that we grab. 
Please, will you join me for tea? <laughs> I follow Damien in, in, to his sitting room, where finger foods have already been set out upon a beautiful, tiered silver tray. I take a seat on one of the high-backed chairs as Damien pours and serves me some tea. I can't believe we're having high tea. <laughs> we're having high tea a second time in the same day. I can't believe we're having a high tea. Or is it the next day? I don't know. I never thought I'd get to do this. Oh. I've actually been on a high tea. It's kind of nice. It's very kind of pretentious and poncy, but uh, no, it's, it's enjoyable. I like, I do like club sandwiches <laughs> and the like, so. Damien smiles to himself. What? Oh. <laughs> oh, I see, I see. It's a common misconception that high tea refers to the wealth or class of the people enjoying it, when in fact the high refers to both the latter time of the day that the working class had to enjoy tea, and the height of the tables on which they served, on which they're served. Oh, I see. <laughs> oh. I never thought it was meant high class, you know, high tea. I never thought it meant that, but... <laughs> yeah, so I'm not, I'm not high class. I, my family is most definitely mi middle class, not high class. And even then, for a long time I would have argued that we were lower middle class. We were slightly more comfortable now, I think, than we were when I was younger. My dear friend, we're currently enjoying afternoon tea. That's informative. <laughs> I mean, yeah, I guess that is, if, depending on the time of day, I guess. Damien takes a seat next to me and serves me a tiny sandwich. Your home is really impressive. Are there a lot of goths in Maple Bay? I like your cape. Um, okay. Once again, I've set it up, I've set this up so I can just see, like, the first thing that comes up is that I, I the maximum possible score I can get is love in this one. Um, so. Your home is really impressive. Yes. <laughs> it's, it seems like you've put, really put a lot of work into this place. Thank you. No one's ever complimented my home before. Hell, I can barely get ma- <laughs> Hell, I can barely get magic salt and pepper shakers in my place. And look at what you've done. I'm kind of jealous. Huh. That's very generous of you to say. What got you so interested in goth stuff? Oh. Well, when I was a young boy, my father... Did he take you into the city? <laughs> when I was a young boy. <laughs> Sorry. Sorry? <laughs> did you... Get, did you guys see a marching band? Hmm. I'm afraid I don't understand. You're, you're serious? Hmm. Of course. But it's... You know, the song. Amanda made me listen to it. <laughs> Seriously? Oh. I'd love to see a marching band. <laughs> when I was a young boy, my father took me into the city to see a marching band. Anyway, nevertheless, I've always had a love for art, history, and fashion. What started off as a small hobby of collecting taxidermied animals grew into a sort of an obsession. It's a privilege to be able to appreciate the lives and culture of those who came before us, I think. Why not go all the way? Mm. I like not dying when I catch a cold. <laughs> he takes a sip of tea. Oh. <laughs> so true. It's like people always forget. People see like the, the regal nobleness of the past, but they forget that firstly, like only a very small percentage of the people actually were able to live like this. And secondly, even those people, if they got a cold or got a wound, <laughs> it's like, a good 50% chance to die. I can acknowledge that there were many terrible things about the Victorian era, and to try and live a life that strictly aligns with those ideals would be admittedly horrid. But I think it takes a critical mind to truly appreciate something to the fullest, to be cognizant of its flaws and love it all the same. Tell me, Rorius, do you have any hobbies? Oh man, do I? <laughs> Oh no, it's his man I do. Oh man I do. But I don't know if I care about <laughs> the way you care about this stuff. <laughs> oh dear. Well, I'd love to hear about your interests. Hearing someone talk about the things that they are passionate about is intriguing. And quite honestly, rather attractive. Please, do tell me about your hobbies. Quick, sound sophisticated. Okay. <laughs> I like watching soap making videos on the internet. Love me some word jumbles. I learned how to juggle once. Okay, hobbies, the best outcome is like. Word jumbles or soap making videos on the internet? I love me some word jumbles. Okay, the best was like, so that's fine. 
the uh, written word fascinates me. We spend so much time using words, you know, and uh, I think people would appreciate them more if they had to unjumble them. <laughs> hmm. It's poetic, really. Mm. Oh, so you're a writer? In a sense. We finish our tea and finger sandwiches. Oh. <laughs> Come, I have one more thing to show you. Damien takes me around the back of his home, where a variety of flowers flourish in beautifully landscaped rows. A small stone path weaves through it, and butterflies flit lazily through the air. Oh. My garden. It's beautiful. Uh. Thank you. Uh. Victorians took flowers and floral arrangements very seriously. Uh -huh. You see, it was considered uncouth to discuss personal and romantic relationships in public. So lovers and friends alike would use bouquets to send secret messages to each other. Each flower and plant is symbolic of different feelings. Even more interesting is that one flower could mean different things depending on the other flowers it was paired with. One had to be extremely careful as even the style in which the ribbon was tied around the bouquet affected the message. Hmm. Damien leans down and plucks a gorgeous bright orange flower off of, the, off of a vine. Hmm. Lilium bulbiferum, the orange lily. What do you think this one means? Okay. My loins are ablaze. Thou art the tightest. <laughs> Three cheers for sweet revenge. Orange lily. The best one's love. Why do I get that strange feeling it's my loins are ablaze? <laughs> my loins are abla ablaze? Oh. <laughs> okay, no, no, never mind. <laughs> Oof. That was horrifically wrong. I feel like... <laughs> I think that's just what uh, Markiplier did as well when he was doing it. And so I was like, I remember this, but I don't remember what it, the real answer is. Okay, he mentioned after I got it wrong. Three cheers for sweet revenge. Huh. There we go. Wait, is that the best one I can get? No, wait. So wait. Revenge was the... Thou art the tightest? Oh. <laughs> okay. <laughs> this is the last one I would have guessed. <laughs> it's just his response. The orange lily is actually symbolic of pure hatred. Well. <laughs> and that's precisely why floral arrangement is so challenging. What's your favorite type of flower? Snapdragons? Honeysuckle? Sunflowers? Oh wait, I'll just save it. What's the best one for this? Favorite flower is like is the best one. Um, I do like a snapdragon. Snapdragons used to fascinate me when I was younger. Honeysuckle? I do like honeysuckle as well. Sunflowers are sort of the most like royal of the three, I guess. I used to, I feel like the reason they call it honeysuckle, I feel like, is, is it, am I thinking, I'm not mixing this up, am I? Honeysuckle is the ones where you can like, you can actually pull out, if you're very careful, you can pull out a single part of the inside of the flower and there's a tiny drop of nectar that you can like lick, it's like super sweet. Um, I really enjoy those flowers, although they're like a weed. I'm gonna say snapdragons. Because they're, because they're cute, and you can do that thing where you squeeze them so they look like they're talking. <laughs> what a lovely choice! Yay! <laughs> I was like, oh, I'm nervous. He didn't say anything at first. There are weeds here. I don't know if they're actually weeds overseas. Um, we when a hun when honeysuckle starts growing in an area, it just like over it just spreads so wildly it consumes other plants. I'll have to remember that when I put together a bouquet for you. He. He would put together a bouquet for me. Nobody's ever given me a bouquet before. I follow Damien down the footpath and admire more of his beautiful flowers. Suddenly a phone rings. Mm. Oh, Rorius, will you excuse me? I must take this. He pulls a cell phone out of his pocket. I'm a little surprised it's not a rotary phone. Seriously. Seriously. Go for it. <laughs> rotary phones didn't exist in the Victorian time. Oh, actually, that might have been late Victorian. Damien smiles and he walks back to the house. I take a deep breath and enjoy the heavily perfumed air. What a lovely yard. This backyard is massive. <laughs> How does he have enough space for this in his backyard? L when living in like a cul-de-sac, you know? This makes me wish I had put a little more effort into the garden that Amanda and I tried to start one time. Our watermelons grew to the size of cherry tomatoes and then immediately died. Oh hey, a gargoyle. <laughs> uh, what I was going to say is... uh. Watermelon's another one that you gotta be careful with. They grow really wild. Oh no, I knocked over the gargoyle! What the? Fix that guard. Oh! <laughs> okay, um... Uh... No, is it this way? 
Nope. It's this piece. Um. Are you, excuse me? Is it, is it this one? None of these pieces light up. Um. None of the pieces line up. Or can I... Oh, wait. Wait, can I can I rotate it around? Oh, I can. I can rotate it. What the... Oh, okay, it wasn't rotating anymore. Um, there we go. Oh my god. Um, uh, oh. oh! That was not good. Oh, phew. Our secret. Yes, rank. <laughs> Ooh. <laughs> Quickly reassemble the gargoyle. Okay, that was close. Whew, that was a close one. Uh-oh, here comes Damien. He looks upset. Ah! <laughs> Rory, it's my sincerest apologies to have kept you waiting. There's an urgent matter that I must attend to, so I'm afraid I must take my leave. No problem, dude. Everything's alright. <laughs> Damien worries the hem of his coat with his fingers and looks away. Everything is perfectly fine, but I, uh, it's Lucian. What's wrong? He appears to have, well, his teacher needs me to come to the school, post haste. Do you need help? Oh no, you don't have to. Let me come with you. Us dads gotta stick together. Ah. You're right. This is one of Lucian's more elaborate stunts. I would greatly treasure having another parent by my side. Let's go. Hmm. Go. <laughs> hmm. <laughs> Damien and I walk into the school and are immediately greeted by an anxious looking Hugo. <sighs> hey Damien, you're here in record time. I wouldn't miss it for the world, dear friend. Wow. Whatever it is, it doesn't seem like this is Hugo and Damien's first time to the My Kids Are In Trouble rodeo. Huh. What is it this time? Oh. This, Damien, you have to see to believe. Damien and I fall into step behind Hugo, who leads us through the busy corridors of the school. We pass by several classes in session, and I vaguely wonder if Amanda's around. Hugo eventually ushers us into a small boiler room with a flight of rickety stairs leading down into darkness. Watch your step. I can hear faint voices drifting up from the basement, and they don't sound happy. As I'm led into the depths of the school, I recall the antics I got up, up to, or I got into, as an angsty middle schooler. The music. I always find it funny when it goes into like, ooh, music. At least I had enough sense to stay out of creepy basements. We find another teacher in a boiler room tucked away in the back of the basement. With him are Lucian and Ernest, Hugo's son. Lucian has a bloody nose. Oh. Let's give this guy a really, really different voice. Thanks for coming. I can't make heads or tails of this. I look around the scene of the crime and see a bunch of bricks and some masonry tools scattered around. What happened here? Ernest punched me? Lucian tried to kill me. Ah! God, that was loud. Oof. The room falls silent. <laughs> I was not trying to kill you, dumbass. I was just trying to build a brick wall around you and see what would happen. <laughs> yeah, I remember, I remember this bit. You promised me there was wine down here. You tricked me. Huh. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Wait a second, Lucian. Did you try to cask of amontillado, Ernest? I'm neither confirming or denying that. <laughs> I turn to Damien and whisper to, him, whisper to him, What's, uh, what's Cask of Amontillado? It's a classic Edgar Allan Poe short story where a man gets his enemy drunk, lures him down to a cellar with the promise of wine of a fine vintage, then buries him alive behind a brick wall. <laughs> it's a lovely story. <laughs> so wait, Lucian, you tried to do that to him? I was curious to see how it would turn out. I wasn't actually going to leave him there. What was the thought process here? That Ernest was just going to sit still while he slowly built a tomb around him? Well, it worked for like 20 minutes because he's an idiot. <laughs> but then he realized that I had lied about the wine. And you were cackling maniacally. That sort of tipped me off. <laughs> Ernest, 20 minutes? Dad. Sweet Manchego. <laughs> Sweet Manchego. Maybe I should give him a Mexican voice. <laughs> no, 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 no. It took you 20 minutes? Son, we did an entire two-a unit on the cask of Amontillado, and it took you 20 minutes to realize Lucian was leading you into the... <sighs> Too long. Lucian was leading you into an elaborate ruse? Did you even read the story? I read the first five pages, and then read a review of the movie. Huh? <laughs> 
Yikes, that's exactly what Amanda said. It's only five pages long and there is no movie. <laughs> yeah, you're right. I paid Lucien to read it for me. Uh... Actually, he didn't even pay me. So when you think about it, this was me teaching him a lesson. Damien and Hugo both have their heads in their hands. <laughs> you guys are always telling me to engage in the literature, and I did. I don't see a problem here. <laughs> Alright, I'm filing this under what the hell. Don't do whatever that was again. You two are both suspended for a week. Ernest and Lucian give a hi <laughs> high five. <laughs> nice. The teacher starts to stomp up the stairs. Hugo, I'll cover your class. Take your son home. Mr. Bloodmarch, you, you too. Thank you for your mediation. We all head up the stairs and out of the school. Intense silence. Lucy and Damien and I all pile into my car and begin the drive home. Lucian immediately puts his hood up and stares out the window angrily. I'm not going to therapy again. Hmm. Aww. Ah. I know, son. It's entirely up to you whether or not you want to go. But I care about you, and I can see that you're struggling. So if you do decide that you would like to speak to a professional about your feelings, we can do that too. Huh. Maybe you can spend this next week looking for a summer job, hmm? I know how much you want your own car. I can't believe Damien's keeping his cool. I'm impressed. Fine. Thanks for not freaking out too hard. Mm. I love you, son. Mm. Lucin continues staring out the window. Aw, love you too. Aww. We spend the rest of the drive in relative silence. The moment we pull into the driveway, Lucien hops out of the car, slams the door, and runs inside. Oh. I didn't expect to have that conversation in front of you. He and I have a lot we need to work out. It's alright, and all things considered, Lucien's bricklaying was pretty good. So there's your silver lining. Ah. There is that, yes. Ah, uh, one second. Last, but not least. Okay, we can get a love one for this one. He's probably just going through a phase. I really admire how you handled that. Does this kind of thing happen a lot? Uh, I really admire how you handled that. You were a lot more diplomatic with him than I would have been. I just want what's best for him, and I don't think yelling at him would do any of us any favors. It rarely does. You're a good dad. Yay! I was like, I'm gonna stick with this. I think this is the right choice. <laughs> See you around soon. Uh. It would be my honor and my pleasure. Damien bows with a flourish. Classy. <laughs> yeah. I come home to find Amanda curled up on the couch with a blanket watching TV. I plop down next to her. Yo. What you watching? Tiny House Hunting Brothers, Extreme Edition. Ugh, I hate this show. <laughs> the couple on screen bickers back and forth while standing in an extremely small house made out of recycled bottles. The Tiny House Hunting Brothers watch them with bemused expressions, both of their heads touching the low ceiling. I told you I wanted a two bed, two bath, shabby chic cottage. This house doesn't even have a bathroom. But honey, the outhouse is only 20 yards away. It's not that bad. I'm not pooping outside, Greg. <laughs> Why don't they just get a regular sized house? I... I don't know. Hmm. How'd the afternoon tea go? It got strange. We had to go to school and pick up Lucian, since he tried to... Huh. He lured Ernest down to the cellar with a promise of fine vintage and then tricked him into brick... Trick... Tr sorry, tried to brick him into the wall, right? How did you know that? Has everyone read this, this story except for me? <laughs> Lucian livestreamed the whole thing. <laughs> this entire day is beyond me. But otherwise, it was a fun day. That Damien guy's a character, but he's really good company. And a surprisingly diplomatic dad. I dig his style. You know what? Me too. Yeah, yeah. Nice. <laughs> that quickly- oh, didn't get to read it in time. Yeah, date complete. <laughs> yeah. Are you familiar with the works of Corey Feldman? <laughs> he simply slayed in the Lost Boys. <laughs> oh, Corey Feldman, yeah. Oh, uh, dear. So yeah, the voice I'm giving him is very different to what I- what he actually has. <laughs> It's all, it's fine. Welcome. It's, it's fun to just make that. up your own voices, you know. Oh, another message. Yeah, so we'll read that next time, as per usual. So next time I'll start with the, another message from Craig, whatever that is. Uh, next up though, next episode, we've there are three dads we have not yet dated. We haven't dated Robert, we haven't dated Hugo, and we haven't dated Joseph yet. The other four dads have all gone on one date each. 
I can either do a second date for one of the dads we've already done, or I can date one of the other dads we haven't yet dated. It'd be neat to go through all the dads first and then go in for second dates afterwards, but I don't mind doing it either way, really. Uh, I'm gonna save the third dates though until we've done all the rest of the dates. Preferably. Actually, I don't know. Maybe once I get to the point where we're doing the second date stuff, I'll do second and third dates one after the other or something. So, whoever I do the next... I, I guess once these stop coming in, once these little side mission thingies stop coming in, or once we reach a certain point, maybe once we've dated all the dads once, I'll do second and third dates for each of the dads in order. So, for instance, I've been asked to do Brian's second date. Whenever we finish up the first dates, I'll come back to Brian, we'll do his second date, and then we'll do his third date and end the game with him. Um, and then we'll do that with each character after then, you know. So yeah, <laughs> it's gonna be a long road, I think. To get all the endings with all the dads, it's gonna take a while, but um, I'm keen to do that. I'm keen to see all the endings for all the dads, because I've seen a few- I've seen, I think, two endings? I've definitely seen the ending at least once. Uh, but I, I don't remember it at all. I, d I basically don't remember the ending at all. So yeah. <laughs> anyway, whatever the case, if you like what you saw, hit like. If you want to see more from me, then subscribe. So yeah, let me know which dad you'd like next. Um, Robert, Hugo, or Joseph. If no one wants to see those dates, or if, you know, if people would rather see a different person's second date, that's fine too. But whatever the case, thank you so much for watching, and as always, 